Hey guys, um, just putting up a video further reflecting uh, yesterday's game between Scotland and Wales and talk about where Scotland are going to be going forward. Um, safe to say that this Six Nations Championship is a big write-off. Um, I think we're just going to go into the England game next week. We're probably going to lose, to be honest. Um, but if we can come away with some level of a good performance and something that will give us a springboard going into the World Cup, that would be good. But going forward, um, we need to get back to basics. We need to make sure we're getting the the base of our play right, make sure we're getting a platform up front, make sure we're getting our set pieces right on a regular basis. Um, stuff that, you know, sort of big teams do regularly. I mean, that's the thing in international rugby. It's it's decided most of the time by very small margins and I've said it repeatedly, that's um, been our downfall is like we're on the wrong side of those small margins all too often. I've just read a thing um, Tom English put up on the BBC Sport website and he said we're a team that's um, forgotten how to win and we know how to lose and he's absolutely right, we've become that team again. Um, we look like a team that we were uh, in the early 2000s under Ian McGeehan where we'd, you know, be competitive in quite a lot of games, you know, play some good stuff at times, but on the whole, when it came down to it, you know, and when we were in the opponent's 22, we'd make just terrible errors and uh, we'd shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, and I think it's a similar case with uh, Gregor Townsend's team now, and that's where I think we made a big mistake, letting Vern Cotter go when we did, because he was actually building something towards the World Cup. And I think if Vern was still there right now, who knows, we might have been uh, competing for the Six Nations that um, we're playing just now. Uh, I'm not saying we'd win it, obviously, but I mean, we might be competing for it, who knows. Uh, hindsight's, again, a wonderful thing, you know, sort of you can look back on it if, if, if. But to be honest, all that matters is now. Um, so... In hindsight, like I said, it was a bad move to get rid of Vern Cotter as we did. And I think it would have been no harm letting Gregor Townsend go into England or France and to let him uh, develop as a coach. But it is what it is now. Gregor Townsend's in charge. We need to make sure we back him going forward, back him to the World Cup and see how we do there. Looking at the World Cup, looking at the group we're in, looking at um, you know the possibilities of who we'd play in the quarterfinal. I think it's pretty apparent we're probably going to finished second in the group uh, with Ireland and um, Japan in it, uh, I think, and most likely we'll play New Zealand in the quarterfinals, and and I think that's possibly going to be the best we can do at the World Cup. Um, just being honest, I might sound down and out, but, you know, I'm just, you know, we're just at a place now where we've just, we're just too much into a losing habit, and we're just too, making too many mistakes, we're not mentally learning from mistakes, and, um, I don't know if Gregor Townsend's coaching is helping that much. Um, I'll see. We'll see how he does going to World Cup. Um, and I think the World Cup should be where he gets judged on as to whether he's the man to take us forward or not. But um, yeah, like I said, it's a bit of a disappointing place right now. Um, the injuries haven't helped, but again, I don't want to use that as an excuse because we've been talking for a couple of years about how great depth we have um, with Edinburgh and Glasgow doing a lot better um, in the Pro 14. So there are good enough players there, uh, but again, it's like the small margins of international rugby and the brutalness to make sure you get it right at the right times. I mean, Wales didn't play that well yesterday, especially in the second half, but it got, they got it right at the right times. And that is Scotland's downfall. Um, just... Yeah, so it's just really like disappointment, pointing and heartbreaking to say we've regressed a bit. I'm hoping this championship, however, going forward is just a write-off and that we don't go back to being just uh, the wooden spoon competitors uh, for that it to be between us and Italy as to who gets the wooden spoon. I don't want to go back there again. And I think we've got players that are good enough to not go back there again, but it's just a case of can they learn? Can they grow as individuals and as players can they get that ruthless edge to them and going forward is, there's hope but I don't know I mean we've been saying the same stuff for years uh, we're a work in progress we're working towards stuff it's like we have to be doing it now we've been saying it for years it's like six seven years now it's like now is the time we have to deliver I mean these players can't get away with just saying oh we're nearly there nearly there nearly there 
If you want to be winners, you have to be ruthless and say, we're going to work our socks off to make sure we get it now, not think about 50 years in the future. Because that's what all the best teams do. I mean, New Zealand, Ireland, England, Wales, um, etc. Et like They blood young players in, but they do it at the right times and they say, we're going to try and go for it now. And Scotland aren't doing that. I just feel like these players as well, they're just thinking, oh, you know, we lose it, it's fine, we'll come back next week. It's like, no, it's not good enough. You can't come back next week. I mean, that's just my assumption. It's the way I see it. Like, I've seen it seen it for years. Like, they're, you know, showing promise and signs, but then the loss comes, it's like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, get it right next week. It's fine, uh, kind of thing. It's a mentality thing. Maybe they're not aware of it themselves, but that's just the way I see it. Um, and... We need to be to have someone in the coaching staff or on the pitch um, that actually is telling these players, you know, we need to get it right now. And it's actually ruthless with them. Because I think Vern Cotter um, was at least ruthless with these players. And he worked worked them hard to get them to become an average team into a, a, a poor, a, not an average team, pardon me, a poor team and made them into a pretty good team. Um, whereas Gregor Townsend took a pretty good team and he's made us into just a an okay team uh but again am i being fickle i don't know like the world cup is around the corner that has to be our next focus and going forward we need to improve the grassroots level as well uh in the whole of scottish rugby i mean i don't know if this uh six team semi-pro league is going to be a success i'm not sure of it I think we need a third pro team. I mean, somewhere in Dundee or Aberdeen would be good. And I think we need to have, you know, a focus on the grassroots going forward. I'm actually delighted that the residency rule has been changed to five years because I'd like to see more Scottish boys blooded through the system, more Scottish boys getting into the national team. Because right now with the project players things, which the SRU have been using for years now, it just seems like, you know, they're looking for players from South Africa, New Zealand, or Australia, whatever. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, young Scottish boys are thinking, oh, they're just going to favour them. What is hope is there for us? Which breeds negativity. Whereas they're um, going forward with the residency rule changing and, you know, a possibility this six pro league maybe be another stepping stone. There might be more uh, Scottish boys thinking, I've got a chance here. I can get into the team. I can do well. I can win things for Scotland. I want to win things for Scotland. And, you know, that um, is a possibility. And I'm hoping that with the residency rule changing, we'll get more young Scottish boys, proud Scottish boys, talented Scottish boys coming through the system. And that will get, you know, a proud Scottish team going forward, a team that our nation can be proud of and a team that's at least competing for six nations and competing with the best teams in the world. I mean, I'm not saying we'll have to win them all the time, but the last two six nations before this one, we've won three, uh, three games in both of them. And I think that's roughly at the very least what we should be aiming for at least three wins per championship. I mean, it's always gonna be difficult to win because we are still uh, a bit behind uh, the other nations in a lot of ways. Uh, both on and off the pitch so we've got a lot of learning to do um but going forwards like I said the world cup is has to be the focus and then after that I'm hoping we can focus more on grassroots like I said so I think that's pretty much all I've got to say guys um I'm sorry if I'm sounding a bit dour but uh I think um there can be hope for the future for Scotland but there's things that need changing, things that need improving and both on and off the pitch and we need to have that ruthless winner edge to us which we don't have at the minute. Wales do which is why they've won 13 matches in a row now. England do even though they lost to um, to Wales but they still have that ruthless edge in them. Ireland for the most part do, New Zealand for the most part do, even when they're not playing well they win. We need to have players in that team and a team that even if it's not playing well, knows how to win ugly. We showed that against Argentina in the autumn, but we need to show it regularly, and we need to be ruthless and say, we are not losing this match. But going forward, who knows? We're a bit of an unpredictable animal right now, so we'll see what happens. But that's all I've got to say, guys. Take care, and catch you later on. Please like, comment, and subscribe.